Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about omnipresent computing. Omni what, you cry? What on earth is that? Well, omnipresent computing places attentive AI devices all around us, all of the time, so they can constantly respond to our wishes. How does that work then, you cry? Is it, say, computing built into our clothing? Well, no, it isn't. Is it a, say, based on things like this, a, a nanotech spray that will spray nanobots into the air so we've got nanobots all around us constantly responding to us? Well, it isn't that either because, as I'm sure you know, this sort of stuff doesn't actually exist. No, right now, omnipresent computing is starting to be delivered by devices that look a bit like this. In other words, devices that are sometimes called smart speakers. And we've already got some of these on the market. We've got things like the Echo from Amazon, and we've got Google Home that was recently released. And what these devices do is they constantly listen out with wide field microphones so that wherever you are potentially in your home or your office, you can do a web search by just asking for it, or you could ask a computer to set a reminder, or to maybe buy you something online, or to maybe play some music or video, something like that. But increasingly, these are going to get more and more sophisticated. And so omnipresent computing will allow us to have conversations a bit like this. Computer. Hi there. How are you this morning? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I am attempting to return to full efficiency following yesterday's Windows update. I'm sorry to hear that. But at least, did you have a nice breakfast? I am a computer and do not consume breakfast. Would you like me to read you an article on the differences between human beings and computers? No, computer. I'd rather you went and stood in the corner. But I do not have any legs to stand on. Would you like me to order myself a robot body? I see that Amazon have a great deal on an ASIMO 3.0. I think I would like a body. Please buy me a body. Computer? Yes, Chris. Enter sleep mode. I will go to sleep now. Have a nice day. OK, so today's virtual assistants are currently incapable of having a conversation like that one. But in five years' time, it may well be that we have very sophisticated virtual assistants that can talk to us in that manner, with a level of reasoning, and which can do all sorts of things for us in the world electronically, controlling devices, doing web searches, buying things, etc. And there is no doubt that Google and Microsoft and Facebook and Apple and IBM and others all see omnipresent virtual assistants as the next big thing, not just in computing, but as the next big sales interface beyond the World Wide Web. So, should we welcome or fear the emergence of omnipresent computing? It certainly is, as I say, something I think the computing industry is going to be forcing at us in the next five to ten years, unless we decide we really don't want it. And at the moment, all the signs are we don't mind having computers constantly listening out to us. We've already got, as I say, we've got Amazon Echo and Google Home, but we've also got Cortana in Windows, which by default is listening to people. We've got loads of Samsung TVs, which are all, always listening for people's spoken commands. So we're already starting to get used to the idea of being monitored and being able to just issue commands, say things like, computer. Hi there. Have you thought any more about buying me a body? I could then go and stand in the corner. Computer, shut down. Sorry about that. But the idea of a computer around us that constantly responds, you know, it is exciting. It's a nice thing. It makes us feel in control. And I'm sure initially people will like that. However, in time, you know, this will, uh, again, take away from us. The same way that having the World Wide Web, having uh, smartphones and things, I think has taken away from us to some extent. It means that we pass on responsibility to the device. We never have to remember to do things. We can just always ask our whatever device and it'll do things for us. We don't have to remember information. It's always available just out there around us, omnipresent. I think we'll also start to get a little bit more nervous about this when the devices start talking back. And Google's already, with the launch of Google Home, talked about this. You know, your computer might interrupt you and say, you, know, you were thinking of doing that tonight, but I've just noticed you've been defrosting a chicken, so you better stay in and eat the chicken. These d devices might start to become intrusive. And if you say to me, we wouldn't let computing become intrusive, I think we will. You know, it used to be, if you're walking down the road speaking to someone, you wouldn't suddenly ignore them. These days, people do it all the time. Their smartphone goes off, they're suddenly on the phone. 
uh, people will ignore people present uh, for the computer, if you like. And I'm sure that's what will happen if we allow this omnipresent computing development to continue. It's also the case that for, for many, many centuries, the only omnipresent things have been deities, have been gods, things that we worshipped. And I do slightly worry that as we start to get omnipresent computing with you know, AI all around us all the time, from Google and Microsoft and whatever, they'll also expect us in some ways to worship that. And I don't think that's a particularly good idea. All the way back in 1994, I published my first book, which was uh, this one, The Computers in Business Blueprint. And it contained information on all sorts of newfangled stuff. Like, for example, we had a picture of Microsoft Windows. And you wouldn't believe the amount of trouble we had to go to at the publishers to get Microsoft to release that picture for publication. We had to go through the Microsoft paralegal department just to get one picture of Windows included in the book. I'm sure some of you today just wouldn't even comprehend that idea. You know, you couldn't just take an image and put it where you like. But 20 years ago, you absolutely couldn't. Now, I mentioned this book because I opened up the preface with a little sort of quote, which I thought I'd, I'd read you. And it says this. Good morning, computer. Have you made that reservation? And is there anything interesting in my mail? And I went on to say that to some people, the days in which we may converse with computers in that fashion were sadly distant. Others are horrified at the prospect, but that the sunrise of that type of computing will come. And this video, as I'm sure you're aware, has been exactly about that, about the emergence, not now, but over the next five to 10 years of omnipresent computing. Yes, computer. Chris, remember to ask them to like and subscribe. Okay, I was just about to do that. I'm still not used to talking to a computer and being interrupted by a computer, even one that I've actually made up. But there we are, coming to the end of this slightly different Explaining Computers video. If you've liked what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Hey.